well. He said <laughs> lots of sex, girls. The wise and old women Geraldine and Ray Winneback, joined by Alison Quiggan to talk about women growing older in the public eye. And as Dr. Pamela Stevenson Connolly said the other night, the other day, just because you grow older doesn't mean you lose interest in sex. So that's a good thing to hear from her. But we're talking about women in New Zealand versus other countries growing older. We have, of course, had some prominent, successful women, I think, in New Zealand. Dame Sylvia Cartwright, Helen Clark, of course, Shanghai. Maggie Barry, who now has um, won, a pr I think, the primary, if that's the right term, mm. to represent uh, National in Auckland. Why is it, though, when it comes to being on television, we tend to go for the younger model, apart from me, of course? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've worked in the soap opera business, mm. and typically, most of the characters are really young, aren't they? Yes, they are, yes. And, and they're seen to be wise and all those things, which they're not usually. No, no. <laughs> and why, how did that make you feel? Old. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but, I mean, was it difficult? In a difficult environment? Um, uh, th there is a tendency for female characters over a certain age to be mothers of, wives of, um, appendages too, uh, so it is. Uh, but I know that s certainly Shorten Street in the writing, they they did attempt to actually uh, readdress that balance, but it wasn't easy because there is an assumption that if you are uh, over a certain age, then you, you know, you're a bit past it. Really, you don't have an opinion. Well, what a lot of women say who come on the show and friends of mine is that there comes a stage where you suddenly become invisible. Yes. Yes. And I know Kerry Woodham made a comment, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying it. She went to New York to do the marathon. She does a lot of marathons with her gorgeous daughter, who's about 19 or 20. And she said for the first time she realised, you know, if she's like thinking, gosh, I'm looking good. And then she thought, they're not looking at me. They're <laughs> looking at my daughter. Sarah, the same thing happened to me. I took my daughter to New York for her 21st. And I was walking down the street, and it hit me. The men weren't looking at me for the first time in my life. They were looking at Georgina. And I thought, oh, my goodness. And how so did I know how it, she felt. And, what does it, and how did it make you feel? Oh, I was devastated. You know, you're used to attention all your life, and then suddenly, you know, you might not think you want it, but when you don't have it anymore, it doesn't feel quite so good. So it was quite interesting. What is this obsession with age that we seem youth. to have here? Are we, oh, with youth, yes. I think... And ageism. Yeah, I, I think it's a shame that when women have got added value, I call it added value. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason we're beautiful when we're young. It's because yes, you've got to reproduce. In, we're a blank yeah. canvas. Yeah, we're a blank mm. canvas. We haven't had but, the ravages right. of time and gravity. <laughs> but when the experience <laughs> and the added value comes into play, that's when in New Zealand, on television, people get dropped. And yet, in other countries, that added value is like, I mean, oh, I couldn't believe the luck when I finally saw Joanna Lumley doing this um, documentary. She was absolutely amazing. She when, did those great documentaries yeah, when she travelled to those on your... Yes. Yes. And she's let, she, she hasn't done this, you know, ripping her face to shreds no. with no. plastic surgery. She looks mm. her age, mm. but she's still beautiful. The, another person I can think of is Diane Sawyer mm. in Absolutely. the United States. She'd be well into her 60s now. There she is. I mean, it's clearly, she's air, clearly <laughs> airbrushed <laughs> so, within an inch of her life. She's got tremendous credibility. Yes. Because and that's the added medium. value. That's mm. what I think we, we're just missing because the added value comes into play in politics. Yes. The added value comes into play in um, law, in mm. the legal system. Mm. Because a 20-year-old lawyer doesn't have the same that's credibility right. as a 60-year-old lawyer. You look at a lot of our judges, our yes. high court judges, yes. uh, people like and they shine. Sylvia Cartwright, as they I mentioned. They shine beautifully. Mm. And why we can't take this added value onto the screen, I don't know. Because journalists, I mean... Typically, someone heading a, um, I, I, can't, I don't want to name the names, but someone heading a, a frontline news situation where there's a bit of investigative journalism, no females. Why? Actually, I've just realised I've got a terrible confession to make. That uh, gorgeous young girl who's the MP for Auckland Central, when I saw her, I can remember thinking, when, you know, when she was yeah. elected, I thought, oh, she's You mean young. Just, Jacinda or not no. Jacinda? No, Nikki. Nikki Kay. Mm. I remember thinking, oh, she's far too young, she won't be able to do it. And she's been fantastic. Mm. She's been great. Mm. So there we are, I'm as prejudiced that's as the, everybody that's else. That's the other way around, yes. Mm. Mm. What do you think it is, Alison, that why is it that people, I mean, is it the way we're portrayed in the media and you look at magazines and so forth, that it's almost like wrinkles are not thought of as sexually attractive or why is that? I, I don't know. I think it, personally, I think it's driven by 
by people of that age, you know, if you yes. uh, because they're actually in positions of responsibility in magazines and television mm. uh, programming, then they are actually looking at images and then constantly reinforcing it themselves. They're not ha they're not looking beyond. So mm. if they're looking at a woman of say my age, for instance, so they they think of their mother and therefore their mother is sidelined so mm -hmm. I, I don't I mean it's like you could look at it in psychological terms but uh, it, it just seems to be a habit that has been reinforced again and again and again it's got to be be driven though if you think about television it's got to be driven from the audience though mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. people who end up generally on TV are the people the audiences want to watch so is it is it the way our audiences are being conditioned to have this obsession with youth could and well looks? Be. yes and mm. I think it's the same with the lady mags all the um, subscribers to the Lady Mags are over 50. That's where the money is. Mm. Mm. That's who buys them. Mm. But it's not the young the, ones. Yeah, if you look at the American soaps, for example, mm. um, Days, Days yeah. of Our Lives and all those sort of things. You go back to Dallas now. Yeah, in <laughs> Dallas. They yeah. were not young actresses. No. And they've they? had the same one for years. The yeah. funny yes. thing is, you go back 20 years <laughs> later, it's the same actresses and they look the same. Yeah. <laughs> and just and like, you think it's a rerun and it's not. No, it's the same. I mean, and that's, you know, let's talk a little bit about this whole plastic surgery thing because I think my f understanding with plastic surgery is if it's done well, you don't notice. Yes. yes. It's only the bad stuff you notice. Mm. Are you supporters of plastic surgery? Oh, uh, uh, not as an actor because my my fortune is in my face and I my, and you couldn't uh, move it uh, yes and I, <laughs> if I have no um, control or I mean obviously people do um, in in some in some uh, um, programs for instance but I have no interest in remaining 35 no. for instance um, there are 35 who, who are very good at playing that I'm more interested in continually playing what I am now mm. so um, whatever age that is so it's much more it, valuable for me to look Yes. It's almost like a, the uh, um, Meryl Streep sort yes. of attitude. She's not yes. trying to and look. And the wonderful 40. lady in Downton Abbey. What's her mm. name? Maggie Elizabeth Smith. McGovern. Maggie oh, yeah. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. I'm thinking Elizabeth McGovern. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably younger than me. <laughs> Maggie Smith's only 35. Every face is their fortune. Every mm. time I think of this plastic surgery and I look at myself in the mirror and I think, where am I going to start? <laughs> And I think if I start here, I'm going to end up down here. It's going to cost me an awful lot of money. Mm. Because how do you start and not keep going? And that's the problem with mm. it. We're going to have to leave it there, ladies. But that's the problem with plastic surgery is it, it's one of those slippery slopes. A lot of women do acknowledge that. You have the little Botox and then you're like, oh, well, while well, I'm there. And mm. Anyway, really interesting topic. I wish we could have spent a bit more time on it. Thank you so much for coming down to see us again. And it's lovely to have you back on the show, Alison. And best of luck with your upcoming projects. And for more on Wiser Now and their website, you can head to our website and get the link there. But next we dial up our